Hey, what's up, guys? We're back again with the new best bridge fam deck in Clash Royale. The ranked 20 player in the world has devised this deck to beat up on anyone that overcommits into you, which is basically half the ladder. When opponents are down elixir forced to defend a Lumberjack Ram Rider, they attack the Lumberjack first, which then rages on their units, damaging them and speeding up your Ram Rider. Meanwhile, your Ram Rider evolves out and Fireball can also eliminate units. When your opponent attacks into you and has less elixir and can't deal with a raged up card that is pounding their tower, they're destined to lose the game instantly. The ranked 20 player in the world is ramming down professional players' towers with this deck. And since you have cheap cards like Bat, Zap, Barbro, and Bandit, it's easy to get back to Ram Riders before your opponent's back to buildings, P.E.K.K.A.s, and their Mega Knights. When opponents don't have their best possible counters to a raged up charging Ram Rider that's protected by an Evolve, Zap, and Fireball, they won't escape damage, usually totaling over half of their tower. This deck is substantially stronger with Cannoneer since you have three spells to eliminate bait cards and the Ram Rider and Lumberjack Rage on backup. It's time to ravenously rage up our Ram Riders to assert dominance. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on any of the daily videos. And major Ram Rider love to everyone that supported the channel with Critical Sir Tag. This guy's got a Prince in the banner and we've got the Ram Rider. It's time to see which charges are more powerful. I think if we can get a Ram Rider near the tower, it's gonna be extremely scary for our Sir. Love the fact that he's gonna go Spear Goblins directly into bats because we're able to cycle quicker to the evolution now. And then we can go for a Lumberjack on the right to prevent his Goblin Gang from getting anywhere nearby. Also, he is going to be running Prince, so it is going to be the Battle of the Prince versus the Ram Rider. We weren't guaranteed. We saw it in the banner, and I thought we were going to get baited for a second, but we're chilling. Easy zap value as well, being able to stop the Prince from one-shotting that Barbarian Barrel. Reason why we did that is pretty obvious. Uh, we do not want to have a Prince charging on the Barb Barrel and then charging on our tower. The Hand Plus Bats and Inferno Dragon will give us something, but nothing extravagant here. I wonder if the Dark Prince dies. Yeah, it's going to die. Get one shot by the Cannoneer, right? Oh my goodness, it's beautiful to see that happen. Because every time that the Cannoneer is able to clip any of our opponent's cards, generally, they're going to get bad trades if it's singular units. If it's multiple swarms, like this Goblin Gang, that's an entirely different story. We don't have Dagger Duchess, which excels against bait, so we're going to have to depend on our Lumberjack or our small spells like Zap and Barbril to completely clean up. So I'm going to Inferno Drag in the back. The Lumberjack isn't going to give us that much damage. I'm going to go in for maybe a Zap, depending on what happens. Yeah, we're going to go in for a Barbril first. Then we're going to go in for this Bandit. And then we're also going to go for a Zap, just to make sure he doesn't get any death damage or any real ridiculous value on us. You know, the Goblin Giant is annoying when it starts to die and then it just spams more Spear Goblins at you. But if you have two small spells to clean up, it's not going to be terrible. Also, the fact that he's splitting up his Goblin Gang is extremely good for us. If he dropped it on the same side, that would be an entirely different outcome. So if we're playing against someone with Princes when we don't have that many distractions, it's in our best interest to go in for a Ram Rider plus Lumberjack. So when this Lumberjack dies, it's going to rage up our Ram Rider. So our L Ram Rider plus Lumberjack is going to allow the Ram Rider to charge a lot quicker. I wonder if this is going to work. I, I think so. I mean, that should do a lot of damage. Yeah, it's insane. Ram Rider's charging, and it's not even getting targeted. Oh my gosh, we melted a Prince on our opponent's side of the map? Okay, excuse me. I didn't think that was possible. I guess uh, the impossible is possible with this version of the deck. You can also sub out the Bandit for Ice Golem, but I personally prefer running Bandit just because not only is it great against Princes, but it's a really aggressive card. Amazing zap value for us, incinerating any of our opponent's opportunity of denying that Ram Rider from a charge. And another great thing is we were also able to capture a positive Elixir trade against the Goblin Gang. We're going to go Bats here, and then we're going to go in for another Ram Rider. The reason why this deck cycles so quickly is you've got so many two elixir cost cards. You've got the Zap, the Barbril, and then of course you're going to end up having complete cleanup on this Goblin Gang whenever you want. And then the Bandit only costs three, so it's not that bad for me. we got three two cost cards and then one three cost card with the Bandit, so super quick card cycle. And we're able to go for a Lumberjack and then Ram Rider again, and as you can see, the deck just works so aggressively. Like, we're gonna get the Bandit tank, and the Ram Rider might even charge, and it is. That's beautiful. This is GG. So despite us not having an amazing counter to his Goblin Giant push, all we had to do is rely on the Cannoneer for our damage output, and then roll our opponent the other side, and they never got the opportunity to go for Goblin Giants ever since. This deck excels at making every match a Ram Rider Cycling Circus as we've rapidly rammed our way up to 3,100 in the world. All right, we are matching into a 389 player in the world, Alexandros. Such a Greek god, so gonna be a scary sir to say the least. I just slithered back into my seat after a four hour hike expedition, and we're gonna be charging up to our opponent's tower with no rest for the wicked. No rest for our legs, guys. So we are gonna be heaving and hoeing and hopefully getting on top of the tower with this ram. 
By the way, when I was charging to the top of the mountain, I guys, I gotta be honest. Y'all might think that I'm a professional Clash Royale player, just like this guy's a professional golem dropper in the back. I'm not. I'm a professional rock skipper. So, we are not skipping the opportunity to skip this guy's rock right out of the game. By the way, I literally did seven skips in a row. So if you guys are able to beat that, let me know down in the comment section. Yes, it's a challenge. I just don't think you guys can. That is one of my most proud achievements in the world. So don't take that away from me, all right? Anyway, we're gonna go in for a bandit here and then try to not get spooked because obviously those bats are very obnoxious. Oh my gosh, dude, don't make me fireball here. I have to fireball, but we're gonna wait so we can hit the goal mites as well. If y'all noticed what I did is I was like, all right, gold is gonna explode. Maybe we'll hit the Golemites, do some extra value there. Alexandros is such an obnoxious individual. Like, look at this guy. He's parading through with a prince. He just doesn't even care about me. He doesn't care what I want in life. I'm a simple man with a plan of bashing your tower with my ram, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think you're going to drop something else that's going to be obnoxious. Okay, never mind. All right. That's a lot of damage. That is ridiculous damage. Oh my goodness, my guy. Well, I guess if you are a golem player, you are trained in the tower bashing ways. Bashed and be bashed. So I, he's a big bash boy. Hopefully he's feeling bashful right now. If uh, he's, like, he's looking at us, he's like, Jake, you're buttering me up. Oh, you give me so many compliments. I wonder if I can go in for a lumberjack as soon as he goes in for a golem and we make a parade push like a lumberjack by itself. This could be funny if it takes a tower. Usually it doesn't happen, but there's a chance. If we can go in for bats, counter with the zap, then we can go in for a bar barrel. Guaranteed the tower is taken with that. That would be awesome. Oh, wait, let's ram right our other side. Bats here, bandit. Bandit is really making a debut as one of the best cards in the game if your opponent has Prince. And every one of our opponents, for whatever reason, decides to run Prince, so it's a vibe. I am going to go in for a Barbarian Barrel here, and then I want to go for an Evolve Zap if possible, so then we don't get destroyed by this guy. It's going to be so annoying if he just goes in for Golem after Golem, but... The one thing that I've realized is we're not going to get 3 crown by that Golem, and then I can Fireball on the Evolve Bat, so we're fine. As long as we can go in for a ram paired with the lumberjack, I think that's going to be our best possible positioning. This lumberjack needs to not die. Oh, let's go. Okay, let's ban it here. Wait, our tower is so low. What the heck is happening? What the heck is happening, bro? How did he take it out? I'm so confused right now. This doesn't make any sense. Hopefully, make me the win. Come on, Clash Royale. I can't lose. I can't even see his tower HP. Yo, this is not a glitch with the game. This, this is my like tablet resolution it's not showing the tower hp what is happening did they like ruin the game like this ui is awful <laughs> how did they mess this up i literally have a nerf in this game this isn't fair at all i should be playing on the phone instead of a tablet what am i doing <laughs> this is awful <laughs> i didn't like mess up the overlay or anything this is literally a ui thing this is hilarious i have no idea it's the mystery hp guys it's the mystery hp what tower health is he at the world may never know. I won't be able to fireball or zap if the tower HP gets close. I'll just be guessing. This is ridiculous. It looked like it was full bar. I don't even know what to say, man. It was just a bandit dash the entire time. Was it fireballable? Was it actually fireballable this entire time and I just didn't know? Oh, that is unbelievably troll. Looking back at the game, I'm not going to lie. Whoever made this upgrade to Clash Royale UI, it is a definite downgrade and a major nerf for me. I'm just glad we were able to run away with a victory. Completely crushing a top 300 golden player by three crowning. Hey, nope. What's up, my dude? So he is midwinter fire. Bro, I feel like I have a fire under my belly after that last game. There is no doubt that I need to win every game of Clash. Like... I feel like I should be able to see the HP every single time, but maybe that's too much to ask for from this game. I'm going to go in for a Lumberjack here paired with Bats and then potentially go in for a Bandit depending on what we're feeling. Genuinely just hate playing against Bowler because if you go for anything into a Bowler, like a Ram Rider into a Bowler, you're asking for a negative Lakeshore trade. However, if the guy wants to Ram his hard win condition directly into a hard counter, that's not a good thing. Like you are... Hard pressed to find value when you are dropping a six elixir RG. It's just, it's not gonna work here. Wait, can we zap? I really wanna zap. I really wanna zap. This might be super stupid, but I believe that split second will generate like 700 damage. All right, it was like 200 extra damage. Still worth it because we're cycling the evolution. If you think about it, cycling two elixir for 200 damage and an evolution spot, it, it's worth, it's good. Uh, this is not copium, I swear it is guaranteed value. Certified seal of the approval from the sir. 
Also, it sounds really cringe when I say from the server. I'm never doing that again. That was easily the most cringe thing I've ever said in my life. And I say a lot of cringe stuff. We can drop a fireball here. And I think this guy is cringing at the fact that that just took his entire tower. Oh my gosh, I took the Inferno Dragon too. I don't even know how that happened. But all I know is I'm an Inferno Dragon. He goes in for Electro Spear probably. If I can afford a Barber, I'll clean it up. I mean, you're so screwed. You're so unbelievably screwed. I Barber on that. I Barber on that all day. All day long, get denied. Look at that barb. He's just like flexing on our opponent. He's like, hey, you might have NATO, but you got whirlwinded out of the match. Wow, dad jokes for days as we've already won this one. A few dominance is asserted later. I don't think this guy understands at which level we're going to get after it trying to three crown him. Like, I really want to take everything I can and more. Out here, just rambunctiously going for the three for no reason whatsoever. Go for bats in preparation for him to go in for an RG, and that's exactly what he does. I'm going to go in for Inferno Dragon, and then also go in for a Zap. I don't know if we fully counter that. Nah, it gets a hit. Feels bad, man. But we are going to 3 crown you! Because I genuinely don't care, and this is how I play Clash Royale. I play like an idiot because I enjoy literally asserting the maximum dominance against our opponents. They look at me, and they're like, why is this idiot have so many cards that he's flinging at me? But it's more fun when you do this amount of damage, right? Who wants to sit there idly by when you can just three crown everyone you play against? <laughs> sure, we sacked the 300 HP tower, but what I got was way more. And we charged up even more ranks to 2,300 in the world. All right, let's keep up the win streak. Farhad. Wow, he knows he's going to go on YouTube, guys. Let's go. We're going to drop the 20 win emote just to flex on him a little bit. He probably has it at this rank. Top 3,000, everyone has it, but... Y'all already know, it is the way it has to go. Oh, okay, all right, all right. You are a, a little bit of a deviant. Dropping that type of win condition. Firecracker with a Hog Rider. That's typically reserved for mid-ladder menaces, and then it's not played at higher ladder. Unbelievably, like, Ram Rider counters Hog Rider for one more elixir. You just drop your Ram Rider on defense. Oh, why is he saying good luck? No, you dropped, you dropped Firecracker and Hog Rider at the start. Like, what did you expect? That's... It's a lot of elixir. You dropped your entire elixir bank and then you just leave? Okay. GG. All right. It's going on YouTube. Thank you for all that. <laughs> Appreciate you, man. So this guy was spamming good luck the entire game. And that's kind of crazy. When you overcommit and lose because of dumb decisions, it's 100% deserved. The three crown streak continues, angering this opponent to no end. So if y'all are sick of people randomly going in for a hog or firecracker at the start of the match, they're going to get rammed out of the game real fast by this deck. That last game is pure proof that this deck stomps any firecracker mid ladder spammer. Yo, we matched into a rank 12 player in the world. That's insane. How do we even play against someone this good? What is Clash Royale doing? It's like, Jake, thou shalt never three crowd again. It is the divine punishment that we have gotten bestowed upon us by the gods of Clash. It's fine. I mean, maybe we can make this work. It's just not looking good. All right, fine. We're gonna go Barbril. Maybe we can bounce back the bandit and not take too much damage on our tower. I'm gonna zap as well. Believe in miracles here, Clash. Let me beat someone 10 times better than me. Probably even better than 10 times better than me, right? I'm not a top 10 player, top 100 player. I'm top 1,000, okay? So yeah, a little bit scary, guys. The math isn't mathing in our favor, but maybe... We can convince this guy to throw the game, you know? Maybe we can get him to be a super seller, you know? He's gonna sell this game so hard. I'm gonna go Banda here. Our void counters are non-existent into that. I'm just gonna let that go. I might go Bats later on, but I don't want to drop them right now. I'm gonna go Ram Rider in front of the Bandit. If we can just wiggle our way in front, that'd be cool. Oh, we are wiggling and jiggling, but we're not charging on the tower, so it's unfortunate. It is what it is. Like a Barbril here. I think that's going to be our best bet. I mean, I just haven't cycled my bats near as often as I typically would want to, but I haven't found an opportunity to waste them, you know? <laughs> you don't want to waste them too much. I'll cycle Zap instead. We're going to waste our bats on whatever he cycles at the river. Don't want to play against someone with a Mother Witch that's ranked 12 in the world and give him like a whole host of piggies coming at me. So playing a little bit more cautionary than I typically would. All right. I'm going to go Ram Rider on the left because we have the Lumberjack counter pushing. Let's go Bats as well. Screw it. Let's full send. I said Cautionary. Then I throw Caution to the wind while I ride through with the Ram. Wait, does he lose the entire P.E.K.K.A.? Pikachu, where you go? You go back in the Pokeball? Okay. See you later. <laughs> That's awesome. The P.E.K.K.A.'s out of cycle too. So I think I can go in for Barbril, Lumberjack, and then another Ram Rider. Am I stupid? Or is that how it works? Nope, I'm stupid. I was one card off. All right, well... We're still going to do it anyway. Let's go <laughs> with Ebo Zap this time. Please. Oh, 
look at that value! There's no way that just worked that well. That's insane. Let's go. He's wondering what the heck happened. He's like, what? Wasn't there just a ram rider there two seconds ago? And yes, there was. Okay, not good. This is pretty bad. Not gonna lie, this is looking really, really bad. But there's always a chance, guys. There's always a chance we can do the dance. Not a good fireball. That should have hit the bandit too, but it's okay. We are gonna go and ban that bandit. Shadow, send him to the Shadow Realm. All right, this is bad. He's got Electro Wizard. What am I doing? I'm griefing. What if we just zap for the one time? The, the one time, the connection, you know? Oh, a little love tap. A little love tap, you know? All right, what if we do one of these? We ram him again. How stupid am I? That's the question that I don't want answered from you guys. I really don't want that answered. I'm feeling surprisingly stupid right now. Oh, it worked! There's no way! Wait, does Fireball do enough? I actually don't know. Okay, yeah, cool. <laughs> I went blazing hot into a P.E.K.K.A. and didn't even know what was going to happen. And it worked. We beat a ranked 12 player in the world. We went all in for the win and it was wonderful. To beat someone at this ridiculous rank at a caliber 10 times better than you, sometimes it does take a little bit of luck. Not gonna lie, if the ram didn't ram, I was definitely dead. But we don't have to think about that. Hey, we got a game against someone with Golem in their name, in their clan, and in their banner. So there's no way he's not running Golem, right? This would be the biggest mind games in the entire universe of Clash. Also, hilarious that he's just gonna have Bats and Bomber with a Golem deck. This is going to be the low skill one with like e-barbs or something. Oh, wait, he's not ready. He's freaking not ready for the fireball. I can tell you right now, I'm going to go full stupid. Nothing less than a full send with this deck ever, guys. That's how we roll. We got the ranged up Ram Rider. We're zapping on that. And look at the tower already dead again. Guys, if you hate Golem, if you hate low skill decks, our deck is the lowest common denominator that you need to start playing. My guy is actually going Golem in the back when he has bats on him like that? What is he doing? What is homie doing? What is he cooking? I actually want to know because I want some of that, my guy. You seem like you're having a jolly good time just not worrying about anything in life and dropping your golems. All right, we're going to Inferno Dragon on that as fast as we possibly can. And then we're going to go in for a Fireball on the Skeleton Dragons that are bound to come down. Hitting some of the bats too is amazing. We can Barber on this. Then use our Barber to clean everything up. Go for a Zap if we need to, which I don't even need to. I'm going to drop our zap on the left side instead, and we are cleaning it all up, my guy. This is fine. Well, actually, not really. We do lose a tower. Wow. I was extremely optimistic about that working out as planned, but it's still fine. We should be able to ram rider and then bandit here, and I don't think he's stopping that if he wants to drop an eight elixir investment. I mean, I hate to break it to you, but you broke your own bank, bro, and now your tower, well, it sank. We're going to Fireball, we're going to go Bats, and then we can easily defend this with a Barbaril and then a Zap. So yeah, you're not winning. <laughs> very, very fun game for us. Not so much for our opponents. And hey, I can see the three crown HP guys. Wait, did they fix it mid-match? Did they listen to me? Do they have like speakers hearing everything that I'm saying? Well, Clash Trial, if you're listening, I have an announcement. This Ram Rider deck is the indisputable GOAT. Ram the like button, subscribe for more daily videos, and have an amazing rest for your day. Oh,